I go up to the second floor and you can see through the roof. Yeah. That wasn't like that. It was supposed to fix that by June 31st at yeah. the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to Fells Point, uh, where history lives. All around us, historic buildings, historic neighborhoods. It's a one, just a wonderful, unique period uh, of neighborhood in, Fels, in uh, Baltimore. So I'd like to welcome you, as I said, to the dedication of the chap plaque to recall the important history of 612, 614 South Wolf Street. I'm David Gleason, president of the Preservation Society, stewards of these historic houses. It's my honor to be a part of this ceremony to recognize a chapter in Fells Point's uh, long and rich history that little is known of or remembered. It is here along South Wolf Street and the adjacent streets that housing for the growing maritime industry was initially developed on a relatively large scale in the late 18th century. I'd like to take a moment to thank all those who helped the Preservation Society in the design, fabrication, and installation of this plaque. First of all, thanks to Brian Blundell, President of the Dell Corporation for the text and illustration displayed on the plaque. Eric Holcomb, Executive Director for the Commission on Historic and Architectural Preservation, who was instrumental in organizing the team for the creation and installation of the, of the marker. Thanks to Jeff Buchart, Executive Director of Baltimore National Heritage Area, and Jason Vaughn, Director of Historic Preservation and Interpretation for the Baltimore National Historic Area, for their efforts in the design and fabrication of the plaque and to uh, Gregory Turnipseed, DPW, and his crew for their thoughtful work in the installation of the plaque. Built in 1797, 612, 614 South Wolf Street are the lone survivors of a number of rows of wooden houses built in the late 18th, it built in the 18th century timber frame tradition. Once a common construction practice in this type of, in this type of building, it is all long vanished from Baltimore's architectural history. They are unique and perhaps the only surviving examples of this housing construction type in Maryland. Now remembered as the Calkers Houses, these two structures presented housing opportunities to free African Americans who found employment in the adjacent shipyards. From the 1830s up to the Civil War, African American families occupied these 18th century housing rows as they contributed to the growing shipbuilding economy that allowed Fells Point to become a major shipbuilding center and an international seaport. Throughout this 30-year period, African Americans dominated the caulking industry and formed community groups and societies that sought both economic and educational opportunities for African Americans living and working in Baltimore. So successful were their efforts that a young enslaved boy from Talbot County learned not only the caulker's trade, but gained an education that allowed him to escape to freedom in 1837 as Frederick Bailey, later to be known as Frederick Douglass. Now, 220 years later, the Caulker's Houses present the current generation the challenge to restore, rehabilitate, and to reinvent so that they continue to make a viable contribution to the community as they have done since 1797. To that end, the Preservation Society has begun a process to find a way to do just that and has initiated the organization of a friends group to develop ideas and plans towards that effort. At this, I'd like to introduce the co-chairs of the Friends Group, Courtney Caputi and Maurice Taylor, if you care to say a few words. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. I'm Courtney Caputi. I'm a partner at the law firm of Venable and also a Fells Point resident. I'd also like to introduce you to Dr. Maurice Taylor, 
who's um, VP for Academic Research and Engagement at Morgan State University. We both welcome the opportunity to head the Friends Group because of the compelling social history as well as historic architectural history of these two structures. I think we all appreciate the fact that many hands make light the work, so you will be hearing from both of us and we welcome your contributions and support of our project to um, preserve these important buildings. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd uh, like to uh, uh, recognize uh, City Councilman uh, Jack Young, who's just joined us, and I'd like to welcome the mayor and her remarks for the dedication of the plaque. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Also, I know um, um, Councilman Z. Cohen is here, President of City Council. Thank you for being here as well. Uh, many of you probably know that um, I'm really standing here because this is history on behalf of not only my ancestors, but the ancestors of many African Americans in modern America. From the plantation they came from to cities like Baltimore to manifest their dreams of freedom, family, and success. Today's commemoration is about honoring these contributions, these lives, these legacies on a day that is symbolic of our triumphs along the arduous road to freedom, Juneteenth. Juneteenth is the oldest known celebration commemorating the ending of slavery in the United States. And I think you'll hear from Dwayne Wickham about uh, this particular celebration. Uh, in, be in beautiful irony, we have, were brought to these shores against our will, but un ultimately we have become the captains of its prosperity. Uh, today is a commemorative symbolic of persistence of freedom and the audacity of self-determination. So it brings me great pride to join you as we designate the Caulker's House as a historic landmark and prepare for its rightful preservation. These two wooden houses behind me, and I, I was saying as I walked up, I said it's a good thing that we're looking at pres preserving them now before they fall down because we really do need the support, not just of the city, but those in our private sector and philanthropic community because this is certainly worth preserving. These two wooden houses behind me were built in 1797, 220 years ago, and are the and are the lone survivors of a series of wooden homes constructed for the growing numbers of African American people that found work in the expanding and busy shipyards of Fells Point through the first half of the 19th century. From the 1830s up to the Civil War, the houses were rented by free African American families who were employed as caulkers in the adjacent shipyards. And today they stand and will continue to do so for many years to come, thanks to the commitment of the Preservation Society in, in partnership with the Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation. It is important that we continue to preserve our, sit our history and understand the contribution of those who lived here. But more importantly, it is a way for those who get an opportunity to come down here to witness what was and more importantly for us to prepare for what should be. So I look forward to working with all of you all and I am really excited about unveiling this plaque, but more importantly, the preservation of this historical uh, building uh, where someone actually once lived, people once lived. And if you get a chance to just peek through the doors, it's mighty small in there, <laughs> mighty, mighty small. But I'm sure that 607, 603, and 05, um, we've done a good job of restoration in this community and so I know that we can preserve this in such a way that history will be preserved, and more importantly, the community will be proud. Thank you all. Um, I'd like to ask you and um, Tom Weaver, chairman of the uh, CHAP Commission, to just simply unveil the, uh, the plaque. And now, This is the plaque. This is the plaque right here. All right. Just unveil that. And, and, uh, yeah. Woo! Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, my name is Tom Liebel. I'm the Chair for the Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation. And I think, actually, the Mayor sounded very well with the term witness. And I think that's what's so significant about what you're seeing here in terms of preservation. It's not just about mansions and monuments. It's about 
the history that we collectively as Baltimoreans have developed over the last 300 years. And preserving the vestiges of earlier ways of living and, and remembering um, those who came before us is so central to not just our past, but our future. And as we get ready to uh, help undertake the restoration of this, look forward to um, the fact that this is a, a, a great symbol of Baltimore's Renaissance as well, too. Uh, CHAP is here to assist uh, with re uh, restoration, preservation, and redevelopment uh, throughout the city. And uh, we're proud to be part of this, uh, this endeavor for the last 50 plus years. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you for your work. All right. So I've got my Constitution tie on just to recognize our history. Juneteenth, um, very excited, exciting day. I want to first thank our mayor for her beautiful words. Um, appreciate you being out here and all the work you've done to preserve. And then want to just start with a quick quote from Frederick Douglass, who we know was a Fells Point resident. He said that a battle lost or won is easily described, understood, and appreciated but the moral growth of a great nation requires reflection as well as observation to appreciate it. And to me, that encapsulates so well what this preservation is all about, is remembering our history, reflecting upon it, and taking it seriously so that we as a city can move forward. As our mayor said, we know we have a complicated history with African Americans that lived in Fells Point both as free people and as slaves, but it is so important, and I used to be a history teacher in Sandtown, Winchester, it is so important that we preserve and lift that history up because a people that know where they came from, know where they're going, and that is why I'm so grateful to the Preservation Society, to CHAP, and for everyone for recognizing the importance of this unique African-American history here in Fells Point. So again, thank you to our mayor for her beautiful words, and thank you for all the work that's been done to restore and present the Calkers House. Um, I learned about the Calkers as a teacher, and it was something I was able to teach my seventh grade students. And again, that is such a unique piece of Baltimore history. So thank you for all the work. Thank you. Sure. Um, I can I'd like to introduce our guest speaker now, uh, Dwayne Wickham. We'd like to have your comments, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gleason. Let me uh, do as you did and find some glasses that I can use that work on my, uh, on my remarks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, before I get into my remarks, let me begin by uh, saying how honored I am to be a part of a program today uh, that has as its first presenter the, the mayor of Alpine City, uh, the Honorable Catherine Pugh. Madam Mayor, good to be here with you. I've come here today because I believe in the importance of history. Uh, I've come here today because I believe in the importance of history. I majored in journalism uh, at the University of Maryland, but also took a certificate in Afro-American history. And so I am uh, enthralled by the opportunity to come and talk about this great historical presence we have here in Baltimore. I believe in the importance of history. I believe in the importance of knowing it. And I believe in the importance of getting our history right. A few days ago, I returned from a trip to Cuba where I visited a slavery museum in the province of Matanza that chronicles an 1843 slave rebellion that was led by a black woman, led by a black woman, by the name of Carlotta. In the city of Havana, 90 miles off the shores of this country, there are monuments to Denmark Vesey and to Nat Turner blacks who led slave rebellions in this country. I don't need to tell you, but I'll say it anyway. Slavery was a brutal abuse of human rights. 
of millions of people of African descent who were held in bondage throughout the American hemisphere. So there is that linkage between slavery in the United States and slavery in Cuba and elsewhere. There are many artifacts of slavery and its ripple effects that deserve historic notice. That's why we're here today. The caucus house we dedicate today were for a time, for a time, home to free blacks who worked in the Baltimore shipyards, some of them during the time of slavery. These buildings were a part, they were in fact the social demarcation line between blacks who were enslaved and those who were given limited freedom when slavery was the legal practice in the United States. The plaque that you've just seen unveiled by the Baltimore Commission on Historic and Architectural Preservation represents, I think, fitting notice, fitting notice to this, to this structure. But I'm going to ask you to imagine for a moment, imagine for a moment, the stories that would, that this house could tell if they could speak. They would surely have some amazing things to say about what it was like to live in Baltimore on the eve of the Civil War when the city was the home to the nation's largest population of free blacks, more than 25,000. If these houses could talk, I can only imagine, they would reveal some of the conversations that blacks had and the inhabitants of this house, these houses, had in March of 1861 when Congress passed a constitutional amendment with the backing of Abraham Lincoln that prohibited the abolition of slavery in March of 1861. That amendment, which was meant to keep southern states from seceding from the Union, was never ratified by enough states to become law. But imagine the conversations that took place in this house and in this neighborhood on January 10, 1862, when Maryland became one of a handful of states to ratify that failed amendment. Imagine. And when the state reversed itself on November 1st, 1864, and abolished slavery in Maryland, imagine the conversation that must have spilled onto the streets of Fells Point. Listen to this newspaper account of the celebration that took place in Baltimore that day. The colored population of our community converted yesterday into a day of holiday, thanksgiving, and prayer. During the day they donned their best attire and social reunions were indulged in extensively. The various churches were thronged during the entire day, and at the church on Saratoga Street, the scene was one of peculiar interest. The place was crowded, and at times it was impossible for a vehicle to pass along the street. Hundreds of flags floated from the shipping and private residences, and our citizens appeared to enjoy the occasion in the true light of a grand holiday. At the Baltimore City Jail, there were three females and one male confined, confined on the charge of being runaway slaves. They were brought into the criminal court by order of George, Judge Bond, who informed them that for the future they were free people and not subject to the will and caprice of brutal masters. The poor creatures appeared overjoyed at being declared free and upon quitting the courtroom, they immediately sur were surrounded by friends and heartily congratulated. The Baltimore Clipper, November 2nd, 1864. These caucus houses are the physical manifestation of the black people who not only helped make Baltimore one of the nation's leading port cities, they are also vestiges of the tumultuous journey that blacks took from slavery to freedom. And it's just as important as the moment we have presented here today when we preserve these houses, it is also important that we get right the historical events that altered the lives of the black people who once lived here.
we need to get that history right. It is important for us to know and to teach to others when enslavement of African people in America began and when it actually ended. Many people know that slavery began in 1619, the year before the Pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, but few people seem to know when it ended. It didn't end on January the 1st, 1863, when Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. That document freed precious few slaves and was never really meant to end slavery itself. And slavery certainly didn't end on June 19, 1865, when a Union Army general informed a group of slaves in Galveston, Texas, about the Emancipation Proclamation. But ironically, in 2014, the Maryland legislature unanimously passed a bill that proclaimed Juneteenth as National Freedom Day. Slavery in America wasn't ended until December 6th. Mark your calendars. December 6, 1865, the day the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States was ratified. December 6, 1865, is the day that slavery actually ended in Texas and in every other part of these United States. So as we recognize the historical significance of the houses we dedicate here today, we owe it to the annals of history and to the generations of blacks who lived during the time of American slavery to correctly remember when the enslavement of blacks ended. Even more important, we owe it to the descendants of these people, many of whom sit today in the classrooms of Baltimore City Public Schools and at Morgan State University to properly acknowledge this fact and to memorialize the day that slavery was abolished. I hope you agree. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your, your, your wonderful comments about, about African Americans in, in Baltimore, about slavery. We all tend to forget so much of the history of it that we, it, 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 we lose sometimes its, its meaning. But, Thank you very much for bringing that meeting back to us today. And I'd like to thank all of you for, for coming today. And there's a reception back at the um, Visitor Center, 1724 Thame Street. I'd like to thank again the mayor for her, for her great comments. I mean, certainly it's a topic that we seldom discuss. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity to, to bring those comments forward and to talk about the lives of the people that, that made um, so much of the economy of Fells Point work and, and helped to make Fells Point and Baltimore one of the leading international seaports in the 19th century. So thank you all for coming. And thank you. And uh, please join us for the reception at the Visitor Center. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.